One of my superpowers, one of the things that I'm really good at, is making really delicious salads. And I think a big reason for this is the fact that from age 9 until age 27, I ate nothing but raw vegan food. So during that time, I didn't go out to eat. I didn't have people prepare food for me, unless it was my parents. And I had to learn how to make enjoyable meals out of raw fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and grains. So I learned how to make really tasty salads because they would fill me up, they would satiate me, and then life was just a little bit more pleasant. In this video, I want to pass on the love to you and I want to show you how to make a tasty salad every single time. It's actually quite easy, uh, but there are some tips and tricks to be had, so I want to show you those. And I also want to break down how to make a delicious dressing because making dressing is just about the easiest thing that you can do, and yet this is something that people are afraid of. People often go to the store to get a dressing. They spend lots of money on something that doesn't taste that good and something that's not that healthful. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a tasty salad. I'm also gonna show you how to make a delicious salad dressing to boot. Enough dilly-dallying, let's hop to it. Undoubtedly, somebody in the comments is gonna go, hey Sergey, what about a recipe for this salad? And my answer to that is you don't get a recipe. And the reason you don't get a recipe is because it's much more important that you guys understand the fundamentals of how to make a tasty salad than if I were to teach you to follow a recipe. You may not have these exact ingredients in your refrigerator and I don't really want you to go to the store and take time out of your day to go get the exact ingredients I'm using. I would much rather describe to you how a perfect salad gets formed and then have you just improvise and you know make your own salad at home. Truth be told, I'm making the salad up as I go. I just found a bunch of fresh ingredients that I had on hand and I'm gonna put them together in a way that's gonna be incredibly delicious. But as I start this video, I don't really have any idea of what it's gonna look like. I'm improvising. And that's exactly what I'm gonna encourage you to do as well because fresh fruits and vegetables, they don't have uniform tastes. So whereas when you go to bake a cookie or a pie, you're gonna use flour and baking soda and a little bit of salt and sugar and all those things generally taste the same. Fresh fruits and vegetables and greens, they all vary in their tastes. You can have one tomato that's very sweet and one tomato that's very sour. And if a recipe calls for one tomato, it generally doesn't note a sweet or sour one. And yet that variance could drastically uh, change the taste of the final ingredients. So more importantly than giving you a recipe, I want to teach you how to throw these ingredients together, how to balance the flavors so that you're guaranteed to have a delicious product every single time. This is also a lot more convenient because maybe not everybody's gonna wanna go to the store and get the exact same ingredients that I have on hand. It's much easier to just look into your fridge, see what you have available, and then work with those ingredients. So I invite you to not use what I say here as gospel, improvise as you see fit, use this information kind of like a CD, skip the tracks you don't like, listen to the tracks that you love, capiche? Sound good? Okay, let's hop to it. So the very first step in making a delicious salad is getting a nice big bowl to work with. I like stainless steel, it's very easy to clean, it's very easy to mix in these bowls, but you don't necessarily have to use stainless steel. You can use wood or ceramic or whatever. The important thing here is that it has to be big enough for you to be able to make your salad and mix it. One of the first mistakes people make while trying to cook is they don't get a big enough vessel to contain the ingredients, and that way when you go to mix stuff, it doesn't really work. Stuff starts spilling and you don't get like uniform cherry tomatoes or carrot slices all throughout the salad and it's just not as fun. So step number one, pro tip, get a big bowl. I'm probably gonna make a salad that's gonna fit in here, but just to be safe, I'm gonna go with the bigger bowl. So let's put that over here. Another thing that I want to note real quick is that I've already pre-washed all of these veggies. 
Some of these are garden veggies. Here's some like mustard greens and kales that came out of my garden. Some of those are from a CSA that I got from a local farm. And some things like this cabbage have come from the store. So I have a wide arrangement of different ingredients that I'm gonna be working with. So the first thing that you wanna do is work on your base. And your base is gonna be like your greens. Things like kale, lettuce, endive, that kind of thing. And you know, it's not rocket science. You're just gonna shake it off any excess water and just start chopping. With things like lettuce, because it's very tender, I like to leave slightly bigger chunks because I think that it's very nice. It adds a really nice texture and size to a salad. So my lettuces, I generally don't chop all that fine because it's nice when it goes into the mouth. This is some endive, same story for this. It's gonna go in the bowl. We have some green garlic, we'll get back to that. Let's do the lettuce first. Some people like to rip their lettuce, that's totally fine. I think a knife works pretty good too. So I just chop everything with the knife. Hiya! We're gonna do the same thing to the endive. In you go. And you can see that just by using two different types of lettuce, we're already putting interesting textures into our salad. This already is something that you can't buy at most restaurants. Most restaurants will serve you baby greens from Costco, maybe spinach or romaine lettuce. Generally speaking, they're not gonna have red leaf lettuce or endive, so you're already winning. You're already making a salad that you probably can't purchase elsewhere. Next on the agenda, we have some cabbage. Now cabbage is a little bit more fibrous than lettuce. So when I go and chop cabbage into the salad, I'm gonna make slightly thinner slices because I want that texture to be very pleasant. You know, so you don't have to go too crazy, but thinner slices than the lettuce. And then we'll slice it in half and throw it right on top. Then we'll keep working. Oop. I like to mix my salad as I go, continuously, because I find that my ingredients then are more uniform throughout the salad. One thing I really don't like is when somebody slices up tomatoes or bell peppers, something really tasty, and then they throw it on top, give it a very crappy mix, and then all those ingredients wind up at the bottom of the barrel. And so the first people that dig into the salad, they're eating only lettuce, and the last people are eating only tomatoes. We want everybody who tastes this salad to have all kinds of different flavors. Okay, so next on the agenda, we're gonna keep doing our lettuces. And here we have some, we have some radish greens. These are just the green leaves from radish. Perhaps you didn't know, but 
Not only is the radish itself edible, but the leaves are very nutritious and very delicious. We have some mustard flowers, which we'll get back to. I'm going to use those as a garnish later on. A little beet. And we have some baby kale, a couple different varieties. So again, here we're going to go through, we're going to chop some of this stuff up, adding more texture to our delicious, nutritious salad. Also, these little stems, they're completely edible, but I like to not throw them in the salad just because it's a little bit more pleasant for the eater. So those go in the compost. You know, if, if it's a baby green kale, like that's probably fine to throw the stem in. But as it starts to mature, this gets tough and fibrous. And so it's, it's more pleasant if it's gone. And this isn't rocket science, so if you get a, a couple stems in there, nobody's going to hold it against you, and nobody's probably even going to notice. That's looking really nice. More compost dumping. Wop, bam, boom. And more mixing. Okay, look, look at that. That's already gorgeous. You have four or five different greens in here. Cabbage, kale, lettuce, mustard. This is a millionaire salad right here. And so far, it hasn't cost me very much. Okay, so check it out. Isn't that pretty? This right here, you can just put in a Tupperware and stick in the fridge and then use throughout the week. That's one, another little pro tip that I'm gonna give you is that you can pre-make different salad mixes. And instead of buying a salad mix from Costco that comes in a bag and creates waste, you can make your own salad mixes, which are way better, way more nutritious, and there's no waste. All of the waste that this has created was actually compost that's later going to go in my garden and it's going to actually improve the quality of my soil next year. Once that's done, I'm going to start working on my tomatoes. Tomatoes out of the garden are so much better than store-bought tomatoes. It's like a world of difference. In fact, some people say they don't like tomatoes and then I, they try tomatoes that come from a garden in my salad and it blows them away because it's a completely different fruit. And yes, tomatoes are a fruit. So similar to the kale, we're going to cut the little butts of the tomatoes out because some people don't like that texture. I'm not that picky myself, but I'm not the only one who's going to be eating this salad. And I want to make sure that everybody has a nice experience. So I'm going to consider others and cut out any unpleasant textures. For tomatoes, it helps to have a serrated knife because tomatoes are soft. And unless your knife is very sharp, it's not going to cut through a tomato very well. Now, I've been a bad boy here recently, and I haven't taken time to sharpen my knives. So, that's something I need to do very soon here. And until then, serrated knife it is. Don't be afraid to add heaps of tomatoes to your salad. Tomatoes give salads like a very sweet, pleasant flavor. And sweetness is a very important flavor to add to recipes. Coming up here soon when we make the dressing, I'm going to talk about the importance of balancing the five basic flavors. And uh, tomatoes will help with that because they're going to add sweetness to the salad and they're just going to make even people who don't like salads like them more because of that sweet taste. So 
spend a little extra money and throw an extra few tomatoes in the salad, I promise it'll pay off in the end. Especially if you have picky eaters in the house, maybe uh, kids or husbands or wives. So for a salad of that size, I basically used about a pint of mixed tomatoes. And then you dump them on top. Now as this thing starts getting more and more soupy, I'm gonna start mixing it with a spoon. But certainly you can dig in with your hands too. There's nothing wrong with that. Moving right along, let's do some peas. These are sugar snap peas. They're very sweet and delicious. Whoop, drop one. A little trick to peas, the tips and tails of them are slightly fibrous. So we're gonna cut those off because Again, we want people to enjoy the recipe that we create. And then we're gonna cut them in half and just start throwing them on top. I like to line them up in a row save a little bit of time and just cut the tops off five in one go. Again, it's not rocket science. Find a method that works well for you. This is just something that I figured out over the years. Now maybe some of you are sitting over there thinking, man, this is very labor intensive. I don't wanna put that much effort into my meal. And to that I'm gonna say, when you put effort into your meal, that's what makes it truly delicious. When your loved ones feel like you've put your energy into it, you've put intention into it. I mean, that's really the difference between a good recipe and an incredible one. So. You know, use it as a meditation. Don't think about it as chores. Just think about it as, I love my wife, or I love my girlfriend, I love my kids, and I want the best for them. And because I do, I'm taking extra effort to make it delicious. Look at that, there's another little preview. Mm -mm. My yoga teacher, Tomio, recently said, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. So yeah, put that little extra effort in and I promise it'll pay off in the end. Okay, what else? We have some young garlics in here. I'm gonna take some of the greens from this garlic and throw it on top of my salad very finely chop this stuff and a little goes a long way so yeah it's a big salad let's do the whole thing When are cameras gonna have smell attached to them? This garlic smells incredible. Okay, look at that, that's gorgeous, right? Let's give it a nice little mix.
Next, let's do some corn. So I have some white corn that I've husked and it's raw, hasn't been boiled. It's also slightly sweet. This is gonna add more texture and flavor to the salad. And I'm just gonna fillet it off the cob straight in. Just like that. Bada bing, bada boom. What else? Aha. Uh -huh. So we got a cucumber. And a cucumber is nice sliced. And some people like to peel the entire thing. But because this came out of my garden and there's nutrition in the skin, I don't want to get rid of all of it. The skin of a garden cucumber also hasn't been waxed. So you don't really necessarily need to peel it. There's no negative aspects of the peel when it comes from your garden. So what I'm going to do, just kind of for style and beauty, is I'm going to go, go through and just peel some of it. And that will accomplish a couple things. So when I slice the cucumber, it's going to give it more intention and more, it's gonna be more interesting. So when I'm sitting and eating the salad over dinner, it'll be maybe a, a conversation starter. How did you get your cucumber to look that way? Maybe not, maybe nobody will even notice or care, but I'll know. You know what, that's kind of, it's kind of a thick cucumber. Let's slice this stuff in half, boom. In you go. Another little pro tip is you can pre-slice the cucumber. Not all the way so that it still stays together. And then as you slice, They just come off already pre-sliced. We're learning. Together we're learning, right? Okay, it's getting pretty full, and I'm gonna unsay what I just said a few minutes ago. At this point, I think my hands will do a better job mixing, so I'm gonna abandon the spoon and just get a little sloppy. Ooh la la. See, I could have even done with a bigger bowl. That's okay. Okay, what's next? We have a few more ingredients and then we'll wrap this up and work on the dressing. We have a beet, some kohlrabi, and at least one carrot. Let's do the carrot first. So traditionally, most people just go and grate a carrot but that's already been done and overdone, so we're gonna do something a little bit more fancy. You're gonna take the sharpest knife that you have, and you're very carefully, actually let's slice it in half because it's slightly safer. So you're very carefully gonna notch out some V's. So you're gonna cut down the length of the carrot and make at least three V's, kinda like that. You don't want to cut too deep because you want the carrot to maintain its circular shape. And then you do it again. You got to be kind of careful because this isn't exactly the safest practice, but 
people love this stuff. For a dinner party, this stuff's incredible. So we're going to do it to both pieces. Perfect, that's actually working out quite nicely. Okay, so, see what I did there? I put three deep V's, like a little V-necks into the carrots. And now, when I go through and slice this bad boy, look at what I have little ninja star discs made of carrot. When you do this to your carrots, people will remember this stuff for life. I kid you not, long after they've eaten the salad, they're gonna talk about this extra step that you took to make their meal magical. It's happened to me before, it's probably gonna happen again, and uh, you know, feel free to steal this, because it's memorable. Oops. Boom. Check it out. How cool is that? Pretty, if I may say so myself. It's getting pretty full. I'm feeling like we're getting close. I might leave the kohlrabi. Eh, why not? Not everybody's seen a kohlrabi. Let's do it. Okay, so a kohlrabi is kind of like a turnip, but it tastes much better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it in half, and then we're gonna peel off the skin. Skin is totally edible, but again, it's a texture thing. Kohlrabi's kind of taste like an apple mixed with a radish, like a sweet apple. So we're gonna use half of the kohlrabi, just for a little extra oomph. And this, my friends, is the oldest grater ever. I've had this thing for over 20 years, but it's the best grater I've ever found. I know it looks not kinda of gnarly, but this sucker is sharp, so it's still in my family. So sharp, in fact, that you have to be very careful when grating stuff because you can grate your finger right in. Oop. So there you go. There's a little kohlrabi. Let's give it a nice little mix again. And as you can see, if this was a millionaire salad before, now it's a billionaire salad. You literally cannot buy this type of salad anywhere. Not in a fancy five-star restaurant, nowhere. This is something you have to make yourself. Well, bam. I'm not gonna use the beet because the salad already has a lot of color. I don't wanna go overboard. And plus, everybody already knows what beets are anyway. Now, typically, how I would put it in the salad is I would just grate the raw beet. Bada bing, bada boom, everybody's happy. But today, I'm gonna skip that. Okay, let's do a little cleanup, and then we'll put the finishing touches on our salad, make the dressing, and then call it quits. Okay, so at this stage in the salad, I wanna garnish it. Now it already looks beautiful, but I can make it look even more beautiful by just adding a few simple things to it. So I have some herbs over here. This is always a good vent. This will make a somewhat bland salad taste incredibly aromatic. 
And again, a little goes a long way. You could just take some scissors and just chop some dill in. If you don't like dill, no problem. Use cilantro, use parsley, use whatever you like. I also have some purple basil, same basic story. Go through and just chop some basil in here. This is a tiny bunch of basil, so I'm gonna do the whole thing. Look at that. And because I can, out of my garden, I have two different types of flowers. I have some radish flowers. These are the purple ones, the pink ones. And then I also have some mustard flowers. These are yellow. And I'm gonna chop those in the salad too, simply because they're pretty. Well, not simply because mustard, mustard greens, mustard flowers are some of the most nutritious plants on this earth. And so I want to get those in my system any way that I can. And a good way to do that is through a big salad just like this. When my girlfriend Kylie and I make salads like this together, we lovingly refer to them as hashtag big ass salad. And by now you could probably see why. So look at that. How gorgeous is that? I mean, am I right or am I right? That is a good looking salad right there. I'm salivating. I wanna end this video right now to go eat this salad. But we're not quite there yet. We gotta make the dressing. So for the dressing, most people run to the store and get a dressing because they're like, ugh, I don't know how to make dressing. Newsflash, making dressing is the easiest thing in the world. In order to make a good gourmet dressing, you just have to balance the five basic flavors. That's one B and four S's. Bitter, sweet, sour, salty, and spicy. Bitter, sweet, sour, salty, and spicy. I can't actually articulate my hands that well. Bitter, sweet, sour, salty, and spicy. Those five flavors are flavors that correspond to taste buds on our tongue. And if we balance all five flavors, when we eat food with all five flavors in it, that's what we call gourmet food. When all five major taste bud areas get stimulated, our mouth goes, mm, wow, this is incredible. And that really makes the difference between okay food, delicious food, and you know, mouth-watering, jaw-dropping food. So today we're going for mouth-watering and jaw-dropping, and we're gonna balance the five flavors. So the base for our dressing today is gonna be extra virgin olive oil. I don't have any particular brand that I'm using today. This is just the olive oil I had on hand. This says Trader Joe's, but you can use whatever it is at home. And now we're gonna start balancing the flavors and I'll show you just how that's done. So bitter, sweet, sour, salty, and spicy. Can you guess what lemon is? Which flavor is lemon? I'm gonna give you a couple seconds. Indeed, lemon is our sour. So we're gonna squeeze in some lemon. We're gonna do an entire lemon. Again, I wanna digress real quickly and say that for this dressing, proportions are not crucial. If you add a little bit more oil and less lemon, it's not really gonna be a deal breaker. More importantly is balancing the, the basic flavors. So for our sour, we are gonna use lemon. For our salty, we're gonna use salt. This is sea salt. And we're just gonna throw a little bit in, mix it around. For our bitter, well, first of all, you don't need a whole lot of bitter in a recipe, you just need a tiny little amount. 
and our bitter is already in the salad in the form of basil. Basil is a little bit bitter. Dill is a little bit bitter and some of our mustards are a little bit bitter. So that flavor is already taken care of. So we have bitter in the salad in the form of our greens. We also have lemon, which is sour. We have salt, which is salty. We need a little bit of sweet. So for sweetness today, I'm gonna to use a little bit of honey. Maybe like a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half. If you don't like honey, you can use cane sugar or agave or maple syrup. That's really up to you. I like to use a little bit of nutritional yeast. This also adds a little bit of bitterness to it. And nutritional yeast is something we lovingly refer to as hippie dust in our household. So a little bit of hippie dust. For spicy, we're gonna use a little bit of pepper, black pepper. Again, for certain ingredients, you don't need as much as others. So while you're gonna want a little bit more salty, you don't need as much spicy. A little bit of cracked pepper does the trick. And then we mix. I like these little jars because I can put a lid on them. And then I can mix them in the same way that a hardware store mixes paint, thoroughly. And there you have it. Here's a very nice gourmet vinaigrette. But we're not done yet. We wanna make sure that it actually tastes good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna taste this dressing to make sure that all the, the five flavors are balanced. And at first, it's very hard to figure out, oh, does it, is it missing a little bit of salty or does it need a little bit more sweet? So what I recommend for beginners is to taste your dressing five times. And each time you ask yourself one question, is it spicy enough? Is it bitter enough? Is it sour enough? Is it sweet enough? And so on and so forth. And in that way, you're gonna train your brain to be able to discern which flavors it has enough of and which flavors it's missing. So always try your food first because if you don't like it, chances are other people won't like it too. This stuff tastes incredible. Mm -mm -mm. Yummy. We did good, Sergey. We did good. At this point, we only have one more decision left to make. And that decision is, are we gonna eat the salad right away or are we gonna store it for later? So if we're gonna eat the salad right away, it makes sense to dress this salad now and then leave the guesswork for our guests out of it. The trouble is that this has salt in it and lemon and that will make lettuce shrink and kind of uh, lose water. So if you're not gonna eat the salad within the next half an hour, I would say cover this dressing with the lid, which I have now misplaced. Here we go. And stick it in the fridge and dress it right before you eat it at a later time. You can also put this salad in Tupperware or put some you know, plastic wrap over this and stick it in the fridge. And like this, in this form, this salad will keep for up to a week easy. This is more than a couple meals right here. So you're actually saving yourself time. There you have it, folks. There's a beautiful salad with delicious dressing, and it's something that you can make for yourself that you can't buy anywhere else. Something that's gonna wow your friends, it's gonna wow your taste buds, and you're gonna be healthier for it. If you like this video and wanna give it a shot, by all means do it. I would love to see your salads if you're open to sharing them with me. And so I'm gonna start a new hashtag called hashtag big ass salad on Instagram. And if you wanna share your creation with me and show me what you came up with, I'd love to see it. So head on over to Instagram, post a picture of your salad, make sure to add the hashtag, hashtag big ass salad, and that way I'll be sure to see it. Thanks for watching, ciao.